around and film this. Can you write around like a whiteboard or a chalkboard? For the video, who what are you what are we doing? Okay, so uh, everyone go in public. There's going to be a, a PDF called TSK3, that's the guide for today. There's also a folder called USB Simple, which is an awesome Arduino library that Kevin Meehal wrote, and so uh, we can use that for this. Um, provided I get permission from him, I'll also put it online so people can get at it. Um, the TSK3, Volume 3, will be online. And if you have a regular Arduino, um, most of the things that we do today would just be replaced by, uh, well, I'll show you guys how you do it with a regular Arduino. Some people have them, so you might eventually be interested in getting it. So, uh, let's get going then. This is that new one? So last week we talked about sensors, and that was good. And people like hearing about sensors because they're cool things. That's sort of the feedback I got. But people are still sort of confused about how do we make this little black box do what we want? How do we convince it to do our bidding? What sort of language does it speak? Can we talk to it? Uh, and so I've sort of change the plan for today a little bit to reflect that. We'll be talking about USB a little bit. USB is super cool, super useful. Lots of things have USB ports. So you can imagine that like, it's pretty optimal to like all sorts of things. Uh, just a little bit though. And then we'll, we'll do an example. And we'll look at an example at least. And then We'll have some interesting things for you guys to do with your stuff after you look at the example. Talk about this one. Um, so, does everyone out there like, well, did everyone get the USB simple library from public? Where is it public? Public slash Rewa bots. There's a directory called USB simple. Copy that to your desktop. And there's also tsk3.pdf. And that's the like handout for today. I don't want to print out tons of that. Because I realized that having a lot of like leftovers and even like four or five copies of leftovers is kind of a lot, like three or four pages. So didn't print it out this week. We'll see how that works. Okay. So what is USB? Does anyone know? Does anyone know what USB means stands for or means? Universal Stereo Bus. Yeah! Maybe we should have started out with that joke. It's like, what kind of bus does cereal ride to school? <laughs> or like, space cereal. Like, universal Cereal Bus! But it goes across universal stuff. So the um, Universal Cereal Bus is this really useful thing. And it's also a standard way to talk between devices, which is great because, like, you know, you have your little thing and it's got some sensors on it. You look at it really hard, even if you look at it really hard, you don't know what's going on in there. It's kind of a mystery. It's like blinking an LED or something along those lines. Um, so that's why we have this little USB dongle in here. So like we've talked about before, um, this chip can emulate being a USB device or become a USB device. And that's how our boom lever actually works. Is it pretends to be a programmer and then the computer sends it a bunch of information that's basically the code that it should write to itself and it does that. And then it stops blinking and plays whatever code you have from. Um, so there are four kinds of USB transfer. You do, this is not something we'll do too much of, but we'll look at the code a little bit. Um, there are isochronous transfers, which are isochronous. Um, they take the same amount of time when they're scheduled in, so you know they're guaranteed to happen. So this is important if you like want to make sure the device is still attached. You have some like super important information. <coughs> you have 
bulk transfers, which is what something like a USB thumb drive might use, right? So you have a whole bunch of data. You don't really care how fast it gets onto your computer, right? Like faster is better, but you know, if your mouse, you, you know, you want to use your mouse in the meantime, you probably want some sort of connectivity there too. So they're sort of like less scheduled, they're just sort of moving a lot of information. <coughs> There are interrupt transfers, which are initiated. Everything's initiated by the USB host, which is like your computer, basically. And so these things are, are like, if your computer wants to know something like net. So it's like, hey, you need to tell me what's going on. Port back. And control transfers, which are sort of like interrupt transfers, but not quite. They're very structured. So there's like a, there's a request. Um, and it transfers basically two hexadecimal numbers. I think that's good. Is that what I wrote down? Yes. Four, no, four two-digit hexadecimal numbers. I'm sorry. And so, two-digit hexadecimal numbers are like how big in binary? Does anyone know? control transfers back and forth, and they will sort of just shuttle this data uh, from your device to your computer. Uh, let's see, and so another note on USB. In the beginning, so we talked last week a little bit about how the USB standard and people decided that they're going to sell these people. They're going to sell numbers, basically. So that your device would be recognized and the computer would know what to do with it. It's connected to the network, the internet, right? And we also heard about how that kind of like went to hell and how people like just make up whatever USB number they want. Um, and so that's why things don't always work via plug and play. But it's also why your device work via plug and play because there's a specific set of instructions for human interface devices that um, exist for, for like USB devices of that class. So your mouse knows, will always know if it's a mouse, all of these requests to the mouse, like where are you, are you going up and down, and whatnot. And your computer will know that these, what these requests are, that they exist, and what I can ask them. And this is kind of useful and can be exploited in some interesting ways for some interesting projects, like RFID card readers or GPS modules, or like USB GPS modules. A lot of the time, all they are are a USB, or a, or a GPS or a card reader, hooked up something that is a USB device that then acts as a keyboard. So if you ever have like a, uh, if you ever like go on like a sketchy website, and like, oh man, $5 card reader. And it's like, you just plug it in. And then you open up Notepad and put you like click your cursor there. All it's doing is then typing in the numbers that it's receiving from the card reading part into your notebook or whatever Notepad program you're using, your text editor. Same goes for GPS. So this is interesting or useful if you like want to make some kind of program that works with this. Or if you later have something that can act as a USB host, you can just plug these things in and you know sort of what they're saying. So it's just fun to know about USB. So today we're going to talk about code. We're going to get this thing running so that you guys can see what's going on on your computers, or what's going on in the chip in your computers. So I'll plug in this like demo board that I've hooked up. Um, you probably can't see it because all the components are really tiny. Uh, but I'll describe it to you. There's uh, so last week we talked about having an LED as a sensor, right? And also having a resistor as a sensor, right? Like a resist light resistant, uh, light dependent resistor, right? Okay, now uh, like three thumbs up. So remember light dependent resistors? Resistors, the change values depending on how much light is falling on them? Yes? Good. Okay. So, um, you, do you guys all have USB Simple, the directory on public, copied onto your desktop? Yes? Okay. Um, so the next step, is, who has Windows? Okay, 
That's cool. So inside of USB Simple, this goes for everyone, there's a folder called um, Python. Rename that folder something like stream pi or whatever you can call it, anything you want. Just remember that it's going to be the program that you run to get USB commands or information back off your, your device. So just copy that onto your desktop separately. It doesn't have to stay in that folder at all. Um, so I will let's see if this works. So like, oh, okay, good, awesome, this is cool. So here's USB simple. So you want to open it up. You want to rename this something like uh, Pi Stream. And then you want to take Pi Stream and just sort of like plop it down on your desktop. And then you can this. And so for Windows folks, do you guys know where your libraries are stored? Uh, so you guys have a program folder, right? Mm -hmm. And so go to like program slash Arduino slash libraries and look around in there and you guys should see some libraries that are called like Serial or something along those lines. Um, for people running Linux, it's user uh, share Arduino libraries. And you want libraries, not lib. So Windows people, are you finding this? Is it in your programs folder? Yeah, I didn't forget that. Okay, good. Um, and if you look at the stuff in there, there's one called like Fermata, Liquid Crystal, Matrix, Servo. Do you guys see these? All right. All you. Anyone having trouble finding this directory? Mostly good? Okay. Uh, then just go, go ahead and uh, copy USB simple into there with by dragging and dropping if you're in Linux. Um, it might not let you do this because it's in sort of a more protected folder, so try doing something like um, go to the directory where. Go to the directory, if you're in Linux, go to the directory where the USB simple directory is and just do a sudo mv, which stands for move. Um, but uh, it's called USB simple, right? So USB simple to slash user share. And so I'll copy it into there. I have already done this, so I'm not going to run this command again. Um, so, did they ever get their library moved into their library folder? Where is the library? In Linux, it's in user slash share not slash... Linux. Not Linux. In Windows, it's in program slash Arduino slash libraries. Yes. Did we do this back in secret knowledge? If you have done... Yes. If you were... If you did the secret knowledge you did this, then you already have it. If you're looking for this file, it's on public. Uh, in, it's in public slash <coughs> Um It's called USB Simple. Do you never have it already? Um, if you want the guide for today, I didn't print it out because I always have like tons and tons of leftover paper uh, copies of these things. So it's also in public slash RevoBots. If you're in Linux and you can't get on public, does that even have that problem? No, good, okay. So did you guys get it all copied over there? Yes. Mostly, all hands. Okay. Does anyone not have the library installed yet? No, okay. I'm so confused about where this is going. Uh, you're on Windows? Wait, this is the USB thing. Yeah, the library is the first one. So we'll bring the USB simple thing there. Yeah. Well, the 
Python folder from this recently? No, you're not putting. The, you're putting the USB simple folder. The, Python, the one that used to be named Python should be on your desktop. Oh. Oh. I will draw you guys a picture. <laughs> no, don't, don't laugh. It's not, I mean, it is kind of funny to draw you a picture, but it's tricky because like these things are kind of mixed up. I'm gonna erase this picture of some math first. All right, so we have public, right? Here's public. Inside of public, there is a directory called uh, USB simple. So the RevoBots folder. Yeah, uh, in RevoBots. So public slash RevoBots. All right, we put this on our desktop. Um, and then there's a folder inside of here called Python, and so we put that one on our desktop too. All right, P for Python, and you can leave it. You can call it Python as long as it doesn't like have a problem with other folders in your desktop. Um, this one's the USB library. This one goes into either programs. Take it off the desktop? Yes, the one that's called USB Simple, take it off your desktop. Okay, okay. So remove, remove Python from don't copy it out. Remove Python from there or copy it out. It doesn't matter if it gets put into the library. Okay. Put it in programs slash uh, Arduino slash libraries. <coughs> this is Windows. Your Linux, put it into user slash share slash Arduino slash libraries. Yeah. This. Eventually, you should have a directory that looks like I'll show you mine, and then you can see. Eventually, this is what it should look like, right? Here's your here's your library <coughs> folder, right? User share Arduino libraries or good Windows uh, programs Arduino libraries, and you should have other things in there that came with it: Ethernet, EEPROM, Matrix, software serial, and so here's USB simple, and it's got a bunch of things in it. I left the Python folder in there because I'm lazy. Um, that's fine. So does everyone have this down into in their in their libraries folder? Yes? Good. Okay. Um, and so this is how you would get any sort of library into uh, the Arduino IDE. Like maybe you know you've heard that there are lots of libraries for Arduino, right? Dot brown, maybe. There are. Um, an example of this is like the blood wire library for this temperature sensor, right? It's like a $3 temperature sensor. So there's a library for that, um, but it doesn't come with the Arduino IDE because if they included every library, people would be like lost. They'd have like some, they'd have tons of files they never use, and that, so that'd be sort of a waste. Um, uh, so you just sort of copy these folders in here or import them in, and then you can use them. So, like wire, I think, is possibly the one wire. So, with that done, um, go ahead and, and boot up, or not boot, but turn on, run, whatever the case may be, the Arduino IDE. If you're in uh, Linux, sudo Arduino, awesome, gives you USB capabilities. If you're in uh, Windows, you should have used the installer, so just go ahead and open up the Arduino IDE. Uh, oh, it's already open for me. Oops. Okay. 
So, here we go. This guy again, right? Uh, I'm just going to go and open up the uh, example that I wrote. I'm going to to find it. So this would be like if you if you have like a if MATLAB released like a new set of functions or like a specialized set of functions, right? So there's one for thermodynamics, I think, called hot. And so this is like getting hot and then putting it into your MATLAB stuff. So now like this would have functions like maybe like plot and like uh, like uh, lin space or something, right? If it was like a plotting module for MATLAB. But this just sort of like brings in extra things that are kind of invisible right now, but we'll see where they sort of come in later. And so I just set up some integers here for my um, light, uh, light dependent resistor and LED, right? Um, we have LEDs and LDRs. You guys should have them from last week, previous weeks. Uh, and so those will be used to hold the values that I read in from the LED and the Resistor on pins analog five is four. Um, so then we have void setup. This we're going to you know our setup stuff. What we want pins to do, and also USB dot beget. And this just sort of tells it to start being USB device. Um, uh, there's a similar command called serial dot beget that's used in uh, for regular Arduinos. And if you had the serial.begin, you could run this and receive and send values back and forth between your, your chip and your computer. Um, but we're going to use USB instead, so we have a, a different script for that. So we do USB.begin, then we want A5 and A4 to be inputs, so that's where I have an LED and an LDR. Uh, and then 9 and 10 are my outputs, just LEDs, just to kind of show you guys what's going on. Um, we also have the digital write to turn on the pull-up resistor on the light-dependent resistor. Because we talked about that last week, you have to have that pull-up resistor so you get a resistive network instead of just a change in current, which would be kind of less useful. Um, so go ahead, and so here's our, our main loop, or void loop, or whatever you want to call it. This is like the, in C, this is like main um, Python, if you have like a main loop. This is the main loop running some sort of graph 